sometimes in life, you have these kind of moments that really blow your mind. What would you say if I ask you, what is the exact number between one and nine? Most people would tell you the middle point is 4.5. The man behind the question is Dan Barry, the mythological astronaut, the professor from Singularity University. Barry taught me the true answer. In the new mathematics of the 21st century, the number between one and nine is three. We are used to the linear concept of one, two, three, four, you know, advancing one step at a time. But this is a different game now. We live in an exponential time. From three, we jump to nine, and from nine, we jump to 81. It's very easy to see it in technology. You wouldn't purchase a new computer unless it's twice as good. And this television set I came across on the street with this very old pair of shoes on it. You know, it was a high-end product only five, six years ago. When I came back the next day, the shoes were gone, but the television <laughs> was still there. Now, what is important now to ask? and should be asked is, is it just about technology? Because everything around us changes exponentially, so fast and quickly, how do we fit in? A year ago, I came across some fascinated people who I wanted to help me find just that. Do I have now to change my whole way of thinking? The first one is the Lady Gaga. I don't know about you, but we spent together four amazing weeks. And she definitely became my BFF. <laughs> Larry Page, founder of Google, he was a best friend of mine for over a month, and this is Jose Mourinho, I hope you know him, the legendary soccer coach from Chelsea, Real Madrid. We spent the summer together. Well, he's not a morning person, let me tell you. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, whom I know, you know very well, and my late father. I guess you know a bit less. This is my calendar of mentors. This is my calendar of last year. You probably ask how I managed to get in touch with them. Well, good question. Well, you see, sometimes it was an amazing coincidence. I remember with Hillary. Hillary, really, she's really something. I really miss her. You know, Hillary, I, I typed her, her name into Google, and we just clicked. <laughs> really? We had a great connection, really. OK, I know, I haven't physically met all these cool people, but does it really matter anymore? In the 21st century, I read their blogs, interviews, books, biographies, whatever. I know how they get up in the morning, what they eat, what they drink. I really internalize their personality. And just a few examples. Lady Gaga. I found out some amazing facts. When she was 16, she chose Spencer Tonic as a mentor, meaning she prepared an 80-page thesis on his art. And this is Marina Abramovich. Another mentor Lady Gaga picked when she was only a teenager. She was very impressed by her totality. And Damien Hirst, another mentor Lady Gaga picked when she was only a teenager. And I had it in my mind when I met 30 marketing managers recently. And I asked them to come up with a five minutes speech about Steve Jobs, which is quite fair. The first two minutes were very easy for them, you know, saying something about the guy who was thrown out of his own company and came back, the vision, the aesthetics. Then one of the participants, who just read Steve Jobs' biography, provided us with more details, like for two more minutes, but then they got stuck. They still had one minute and there was silence. At the age of 16, Lady Gaga could have talked for hours about any one of her mentors. At the age of 16, Lady Gaga was already using other people's experience and inspiration so much more than a 30-year-old marketing manager. 
This is how you make a difference. This is how you get the leap from three to nine. This is T-School. You know, she was accepted to T-School of the Arts at NYU, one out of thousands, you know, but she quit only a few months later. Why? Because she felt the place wasn't enough for her. People told her she was crazy, but she didn't listen. She's done a lot to get from three to nine, or should we say uh, 81. Now, imagine you have 70 psychology students in a class. They all wish to continue the studies to clinical psychology, but only 5% will be accepted. So I asked them, you know, how will you prepare yourself to become part of the 5%? So one of them says, I have a plan. I'm going to use Michael's notes. They are the best. <laughs> okay, so I asked the whole class. Who else is using Michael's notes? And everyone raises their hands. <laughs> so when another one said, I'm a, I have a better plan. I have a psychologist uncle who helped me prepare for the interview. So I asked the whole class, who else has a very close relative in psychology? And everyone, just everyone, raises their hands. So see, there are all three now who will be creative enough to make the difference, who will make the leap from three to nine. And what they have to find now is what I call exceptional conditions. Now, you see, I was amazed that why the digital world is at the palm of their hands. They still choose to use Michael's notes. Hey, they don't live in a global village of the 21st century. They still live in the local village of the 19th century. It's very important for me to emphasize now that exceptional conditions is not just about Google and technology. Because you see, we have to get used to the idea that we can have exceptional conditions in every aspect of our lives. I remember searching an English tutor for my six-year-old boy, Itamar. I didn't want him to struggle with English like his father does at this very moment. <laughs> and I saw an ad, you know, a small ad across the street for English lessons, uh, tapped, taped to the wall. So I saw a number, I called the person. And after the first lesson, I asked Itamar, so, how was the lesson? And he told me, so boring. And I told him, maybe in the most popular Middle Eastern term, yalla yalla, <laughs> which in this context means stop complaining, start learning. Well, needless to say, he was absolutely right, and after two months, she resigned, and we had to find a new one. But this time, we searched and looked very seriously, and we found a new teacher, a much better English teacher. The moment she entered our house, we were amazed. And it's not what you think. We were amazed because English lessons, all of a sudden, involved stickers on the walls, iPad practices, drama games, shopping in English at the supermarket, you name it. And just to think, if the first tutor hadn't quit, we would have stayed with the first option. What a waste it could have been. One night, I remember Itamar singing in English in the bathroom. Really, I was so moved. I told him, Itamar, I heard your English. Sounds like, you know, a mother tongue, a native speaker. You are about to be saved. <laughs> I remember him looking at me saying, Daddy, you know you're crazy. <laughs> we just all one click away from a much better option for someone or something that really can make a difference for us. We are all just a few phone calls away from a much better English tutor. The question is, where do we stop? Where do we stop? At the first option? Or we keep searching until we know we really have it. And it's not just about being more successful. It's about extending your scope in life, but having more dynamic life and enjoying it much, much more. And if you don't do it, it's as if you step into the best ice cream store in Italy, taste only the first two flavors, and walk out. Why do that? Exceptional conditions can come in so many options. Jose Mourinho, maybe the best soccer coach in the world right now, has his own exceptional conditions. One of them is details. He's very much into details. Take any player in the league, 
He will tell you right on the spot his height, weight, and the last time he scored. It's not uncommon for him to walk up to a player of the opposing team and congratulate him on his kid's birthday. Mourinho himself says it's not about soccer, it's about human science. Larry Page, founder of Google, willing to give only eight hours a year for the sake of PR for his company. Just imagine, kings, presidents, you know, prime ministers, they all wait to meet him, but for him, time is sacred. And this is only one out of many exceptional conditions he created for himself. And the Lady Gaga again. By the way, half of her body is covered with tattoos while the other half is clean, because that's what she promised to her father. What is she after all? Shallow, superficial, provocative, or deep and sophisticated? Both. Being both is her exceptional condition. Now, I feel a little bit just Lady Gaga now, <laughs> when she was 16, keep talking about my mentors. But you see, it actually changed my life, creating this calendar of mentors. And for me, maybe, it is my way to get closer to my nine. But it's only one option. As is so, exceptional conditions can come in so many ways, so many forms. As long as you remember, we are living in an exceptional time. So we have to create exceptional conditions for us and for the people we love. This December, my last mentor is my late father, Baruch Doron. Well, I'm still missing him, and uh, I know it sounds like a cliché, but he really has done everything to be there for me. But he also urged me to find more and more people that I can look up to. And I didn't get it. So I asked him, because maybe I thought he, he felt he wasn't enough for me or so. But he told me, there is no point in not using the experience of wise and brave people. Life can be much more interesting this way. And that's what I wanted to share with you tonight. Thank you.